Apple's new MacBook Pros have taken the world by storm, earning various world's best trophies for everything from the world's best laptop speakers and displays, all the way to the world's fastest laptop CPU performance, and even beating out the fastest RTX 3080 mobile graphics performance in certain workflows. And if you follow this channel, you might already know that I fully believe that Apple created the best laptop in the world if you consider the entire package, not to mention the insane battery life and the class leading resale value. And because of all of that, I predicted that Apple would spark a laptop revolution with Windows laptop makers caving in and switching to ARM based chips to get the best combination of performance and battery life just like these new MacBook Pros. But then, on the morning of October 23rd, an article was shared on Twitter claiming that CPU performance benchmarks for a new Intel Alder Lake laptop chip had been leaked, apparently outperforming Apple's M1 Max, which was obviously hard to believe. But then, I opened the link to find that it was actually true. Intel's new i9-12900HK chip pulled ahead of the M1 Max by almost 500 points in the multi-core test, while being almost almost 50% faster than Intel's previous flagship chip, and even faster than the previous desktop flagship, the i9-11900K, which is absolutely mind-blowing. And based on that, I think we can safely say that Intel came back with a bang with their new 12th gen chips, almost making it seem like they've been holding back for months for the perfect opportunity to strike and steal Apple's thunder. So that right there is exactly what I'm gonna discuss in this video, including whether I think Intel has created the M1 Max killer, or if it's just a fluke that won't end up materializing when these laptops start showing up in the real world. And then I'm also gonna talk about if Intel can actually compete in terms of other factors like performance per watt and battery life, as well as the most important thing of all, real performance in productivity workloads. But before I get into all of this Alder Lake talk, I want to give you guys some context about how big of a deal this comeback really is. But first, I want to mention that only around 27% of you guys are subscribed, so if you haven't already, do so right now to help us reach our goal of a million subs before the end of the year, or you could support us by checking out our new Notchbook Pro merch design in the merch shelf right below this video. Thank you. Now since I was already expecting Apple to create the world's fastest laptop chip, I made a video four months back discussing how Intel's x86 architecture would eventually die off to make way for ARM-based chips, starting with laptops first. But then, I made an updated video two months back discussing how Intel is gonna come back with a vengeance, and that was based on two different points. The first point was that at the time, Intel was rumored to be buying out Sci-5, the maker of high-performance RISC-V chips that are very similar to ARM-based chips, and they were even making plans to start pumping out these new chips for laptop use as soon as next year. And the second point was that their x86-based Alder Lake was actually looking very promising, and they could help power Intel through this tough phase before switching to those RISC-V chips for laptops. But just two days before those leaked benchmarks showed up on the internet, it was reported that Intel's talks with Sci-5 about buying out the company have suddenly ended without a deal, which means no more RISC-V chips for Intel. So here's what I think happened. I think Intel began testing their new 12th gen laptop chips only to be completely blown away by the almost 50% multi-core CPU performance jump compared to the previous flagship chip. And at that point, they realized that they struck gold and they no longer have to resort to paying millions of dollars to develop new RISC-V based chips. So they basically called the deal off and potentially released those benchmarks themselves just two days later as a warning shot to Apple and AMD. And to be completely honest, if these leaked benchmarks turn out to be true, what Intel has achieved has totally blown me away, and at this point in the story, I can finally admit that x86 isn't dead. And if Intel continues to keep this up, then x86 ain't going nowhere anytime soon. So with that said, I started doing some research on how Intel was able to pull this off, including what potential downsides these chips could have compared to Apple's M1 Max chip and ultimately what all of this means 
for real world performance. So without further ado, let's get into the technicals. As you might already know, the secret sauce to Alder Lake is the use of big little cores, which is essentially a mixture of powerful cores and efficiency cores, which is something that Apple has been using ever since the A10 Fusion chip in the iPhone 7. Now the main benefit of this is that previously, all of the cores would essentially have to be identical, making it easier for PC software to schedule processing tasks. But the problem is that Intel would have to find the perfect balance between performance, heat output, and battery life which is why we have that TDP rating based on what device the chip is going into. But now, with big little technology, Intel can make their performance cores even faster to further improve single core performance without sacrificing battery life because you've also got the low power efficiency cores that can handle simple tasks on their own, drastically reducing power usage and improving battery life. But then, when firing up all of the cores together using Intel Intel's new thread director technology that is now supported in Windows 11, you also get incredibly impressive multi-core performance like we saw in those leaked benchmarks, which were likely also pushed further by Intel's more efficient 10 nanometer process, which is finally ready for mainstream. But with that said, don't think that Intel just swooped in and obliterated Apple's new M1 Max chip because there are still some pieces to this puzzle that we've got to talk about, with the first one being power draw. Usman Perzada, who wrote the article revealing these groundbreaking leaked benchmarks, also mentioned that this new chip is using roughly the same TDP as the previous gen i9-11980HK processor. And according to Jared's tech on YouTube, the maximum wattage that the 11980HK hit was a massive 93.7 watts within the Gigabyte Aero 17YD, which keep in mind is a bulky 17 inch laptop that measures 21.4 millimeters thick, which is about 27% thicker than Apple's M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro which we were only able to get up to a peak of 31.3 watts, which is quite literally three times less peak power than what the new Intel chip is supposed to peak at. So if we convert those leaked benchmarks into performance per watt metrics, the M1 Max takes the clear win, showing just how much more efficient it really is. Now, if you're wondering about sustained wattage, Hardware Unboxed tested the 11980HK and it ran at a sustained 75 watts of power while inside the even thicker 25.9 millimeter MSI G76 Raider laptop, compared to our testing of the M1 Max running at a sustained 28 watts. So performance per watt improves a little bit for the Intel chip. But then we actually got some incredibly impressive leaked Cinebench R23 benchmark numbers for the lower end Alder Lake i7 12700H, scoring as much as 18,500 points in a single run of the multi-core test, but then going down to 17,203 points for a full 10 minute stress test. So if we compare that to the 10 minute score on the M1 Pro chip, the Intel chip is about 37% faster, which is extremely impressive basically proving that multiple Alder Lake chips are going to be outperforming the 10 core M1 Pro and Max by a huge margin. Now, the only weird thing is that some of the other leaked benchmarks don't really make sense. Like for example, the 12700H only scored up to around 11,000 points in Geekbench 5, which is quite a bit lower than the M1 Pro and Max. And then in a separate leak, the 12800H somehow scored even lower than the 12700H, which doesn't really make any sense. But one thing we know for sure is that the TDP is rated at 45 watts, so we can try to figure out the performance per watt. Now in our office right now, we also have a 45 watt TDP 11900H inside of the pretty thin Razer Blade Advanced 15 laptop and it peaked all the way up to 103.76 watts 
before going down to a sustained 65 watts throughout a 10 minute Cinebench R23 run. So if we assume that the new Alder Lake 45 watt 12700H will run at a similar sustained wattage, we end up with 265 points per watt compared to 449 on the M1 Pro, giving it 70% better performance per watt. So what this ultimately means is that Apple is still gonna remain the efficiency king because the Alder Lake Intel laptops will obviously use much more power and they'll likely also downclock drastically when you unplug the power adapter from the laptop which might explain the vastly lower 6,400 leaked Geekbench 5 score on the top of the line 12900 HK chip. However, Intel actually has a pretty awesome trick up their sleeve to improve battery life for future Raptor Lake chips, which are coming after Alder Lake. It's basically a new digital linear voltage regulator power delivery system, which could reduce power by up to 25%, which is huge and should help with battery life. But when you dig into Intel's official patent application, you can see that there is absolutely no advantage at all when above a certain amperage which a Twitter user estimated to be over 50% CPU load. So this is really only gonna help for more common, simple tasks, not productivity work. But nevertheless, setting aside battery life and efficiency, there is no denying that Intel's new higher-end Alder Lake laptop chips will be able to outperform Apple's M1 Pro and Max by a pretty big margin, basically proving that x86 isn't going anywhere anytime soon, so I've got to give props to Intel for doing such a great job with their Alder Lake chips. Now, the only question that remains is real-world performance in real productivity workloads because as we've already seen Apple's unified memory architecture is incredibly impressive leading to mind-blowing programming performance like compiling Mozilla Firefox almost as fast as the new best of the best Alder Lake 12900K desktop chip. And the only way to figure out the true real world performance is to actually test it out. So if you wanna see us compare the new M1 Max chip to the Alder Lake laptop chips, click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one and definitely check out one of those two right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.